Hello, and welcome to our program. This is the Porch Ideas Network with your host, Dave and Mary Morris. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Mary. Welcome to our audio program featuring experts and fellow porch lovers who share tips for creating a fantastic porch and yard. We are very excited to have you on our porch today, so let's get right to our topic. Well, today Dave and I are really, really honored to have Lisa Collins on our porch. Lisa lives out in California, in yeah. Pasadena, oh, no. beautiful country out there. Tough life out there. <laughs> and she Tough. is a professional <laughs> artist. She's a full-time professional artist, a watercolor artist. I, I might say that she's somewhat a self-learned watercolor artist. She's been doing art since she, she was a teenager. And Lisa is from um, New Zealand, know, which, is, pretty cool. which yeah. is very, yeah. very cool. I love listening to her accent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we want to welcome to our porch today, Lisa. Welcome, and, Lisa. Uh, we are very excited to tell our listeners all about your custom house portraits. Such an intriguing topic. It is great. It's great. They're beautiful, too. So. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's great to talk to you guys again. Oh, very, very good. good. Lisa, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. I know that you just uh, started back to full-time art in the last few years. So just tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Yes, I um, I started my career in New Zealand in, um, when I was 17. I love all sorts of arts. And I, I love um, large paintings, landscapes, but I soon became intrigued in architecture. And so I started depicting uh, historic buildings, old Victorian villas and cottages in New Zealand on my canvas. And before I knew it, I had a market. And it was a very successful one in a, in a niche market in New Zealand. But then I got involved in all sorts of other things. Um, I love the nonprofit world and helping people. And it took me all over the world in the field of human rights, working with children, um, educating them against drugs and that sort of thing. And then five years ago, I decided I'd make my living from my art. So that's what I've done, and it's gone very, very well. And now I've done homes, historic homes, house portraits in 43 states across America. And it's just a fun little market. It's a fun area because every single painting I do, and I've done over, I've estimated a, a, over a thousand in these years, in these last years. Wow. Um, <laughs> My goodness. That's a lot. Yeah, but every single one is different. It's yeah. unique. There's never, you never do the same thing twice. And I've estimated I've done uh, around 35 different architectural styles. So that's what makes it intriguing and interesting. And, it's, you know, I work hard, but it's, it's fine because I love what I do. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's just inspiring to hear you talk, Lisa, because you live a life of, of being able to do what you love, live out your passions. So many of us want to do that, just like yeah. you, and uh, we really appreciate that about you. So you got started as an artist very young and have been doing, that, have been doing it for a long time, but how did you actually come to be a full-time artist? Um, you mean this recent, when yes. I relaunched my career? You yes. Mean? How, did you, how did you do that switch? Well, you know, I think the best way to do something like that is to jump in head first, and um, that's what I did. I just decided I wasn't going to make a dime from anything else. I had, it had to be from my art. Just as when I started off in New Zealand, 17, I drove around the country. I was painting, and when I was completely starving, um, <laughs> I mean, this was the 70s, <laughs> uh, when I was completely starving, I just sit at my easel in front of a, um, a resort or something and start painting a mountain and someone would buy it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's pretty neat. The next thing I, had, I, I went on my way, more adventures, food. So you have to, um, if you decide that's the only way you could, you're going to make your money, it, you become, it's, it's, um, you become pretty creative about it. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, and then Bruce, my husband, he had a, um, a nine to five job and that really helped in the initial stages because it took about a year i mean i was making some money but not a lot but now it's um you know now i'm the main breadwinner and he helps me because um my income soon doubled what he was making so the beauty of it is that we can travel you know we can take i can do my house portraits wherever i go in the country so that doesn't limit us and we can set up shop wherever we go so it really is a matter of a decision, and then 
working out the public relations, the marketing, and a whole business plan that goes with it. I mean, I'm a decent artist, but there's many, many more that's, that are much more talented than I. But really, if you're going to make your living as an artist, you have to do much more than do the art. You have to be willing to work, think of it as a business plan and as a, you know, what do you have to do to get all the steps in place in order to make it a lucrative thing? No, that's, Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's really good advice. I mean, making the decision, the commitment, and then coming up with the plan and following through with the plan. That's, you know, the essence of that. I think a lot of people fall short because uh, they don't have one of those. You know, any one of those, if you don't have it, your chances of succeeding are, are far less. Yeah, I'm afraid that's how it is yeah. today. If yeah. you just, especially today, if you just relied on, you know, putting your work in galleries and going that route, it's it's very, very difficult. And only a fraction of the people ever make it. And it might take 20, 30 years, but I didn't yeah. have that. Oh, yeah, my yeah. <laughs> you got to eat. <laughs> That's right. Well, one of the things that really intrigue us about your work is the custom house portraits that you do for your customers. And could Mm -hmm. you tell us just exactly what is a a house portrait and what's the process that you do to create one? Yeah, sure. Okay, so obviously the first thing you need is a house, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) You need, uh, and there's so many beautiful homes. And so... People put so much time, money, love, blood, sweat, and tears into making their homes beautiful. It's where they raised their family. Often it's, they were sometimes passed down from their parents. So it's got all those beautiful memories, all those fun times. They want to capture all that. And as much as they love their house, they'd never dream of putting a photo of it on the wall. Which, yeah. I mean, it's just a bit tacky. Yeah. So now if someone makes it into a work of art and captures all that beauty, and there it's a frame, beautiful piece on the wall. They enjoy it every single day. And I'm always getting emails, people telling me that. And yeah. um, so the first thing I do is if I'm, if I'm local, I go to the site, go to the house, find the best angle. What do I, how do I think it best is depicted? Mm-hmm. What season, you know, um, because even if it's not in the right season uh, and it's dead of winter, it could still be beautiful or I could put it in the spring. You know, I can tell what is there from what's there. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I could recreate the seasonal look. And um, if I'm not there, I get the the, um, homeowners to send me photos of their home. And sometimes they're not quite the right photos, so I just direct them. These days with digital cameras and iPhones and everything else, you know, you can't really lose. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's pretty easy. It's so much easier. So much easier. So I once I have all that collected, I really figure out, that's a key part, you figure out how best to depict the home. Sometimes I do a little rough sketch, I send it to the homeowner and say, what do you think? And we, we uh, go back and forth. And then once it's decided, I recommend um, sizes, prices, framing. I give them all the information so they can make their decision. And um, that's it. And then when it's done, I... Um, Sometimes I ask for a deposit, often I don't, because, you know, I just totally trust people, actually, and I've never had a problem. And then when it's done, I send them the image so they can see it, you know, uh, email, and then uh, they usually are absolutely in love with it. And then I just send it off to them, or if locally, we deliver it, and um, that's it. Awesome. So, process. so for most of your customers, are they doing the house portraits for themselves or are they doing it as gifts or, or are there other reasons why people have them done? Well, I'd break it up into thirds. About a third would just feel they've done so much on the house, they deserve this house portrait. Uh-huh. You know, it's their gift to themselves. Uh-huh. Uh, and a third would be giving it as a gift to usually their spouse. Oh, okay. Um, That's neat. Often it's a surprise gift, so there's a bit of skullduggery going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sneak the photos, find out when they're not there. Sometimes, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. the uh, husband, for example, it's a present for the husband, and you know, I might get the time wrong, and the husband's walked out, so I've had to lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Make up a story about, oh, I'm just passing by, I'm an architectural student. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, blah, blah, blah. I think it's something. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's good. And then the other third is it's kids who've grown up in the home, uh, they or um, it's their parents' home, 
like it's not their home, it's their childhood home. They're not even there any, anymore. And a lot of people, they get their own home, and once they've got their own home, they want to get their earlier homes, and they have a series of oh. homes. I've had someone who's got four, oh. uh, three, two, um, and I get this all the time. So that is, and that's often a refer. That I mean, sorry, that's a repeat. You know, people love their home so much, then they think, oh, yeah, I want you to do my other home. So um, those are how it breaks down. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that is really yeah, interesting. It is, yeah. I, I yeah, saw yeah. the the picture that you did of uh, Bruce's, your husband's childhood home. Uh -huh. And um, I could see where, like, yeah. you know, like for Dave and I, it'd be fun oh. to have a picture of oh, each man. of our childhood homes. Well, that too, but all, all the homes we've lived in. Oh, would, my gosh. Gee, that would, take <laughs> that up would a whole be wall. a lot of homes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might fill up a whole wall, right? You yeah, it, it might. would. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, of our childhood homes, that would be neat to have that. That would be That'd very be nice. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, especially if you think, you know, oh, we'll do that. You could even have them in different seasons and different looks, but they'd all be a set. It'd be really cool. Yeah. That well, now nice. that you talk about the different seasons, um, yeah. we, we had the honor of seeing um, one of the homes that you did in the four different seasons, which is very beautiful. So wow. did the homeowner take pictures of their home in each of the seasons, or how did you do that? No, she, um, yeah, that was interesting, the, four, the one I, you have on yours, yeah, the, the four seasons and the four cats. So, yes. Uh, that particular one has four different cats, and it, she did it for her parents, and uh, it's a great story. She just sent me a few photos, but one of them, I could tell in that particular instance, the house really just looked very good from a particular angle. Trying to do it from other angles didn't really work, so I said, let's just use this one as the base. Then, on top of that, I could see what sort of things were in the garden. Then we had a phone call, and she described the different uh, flowers and colors and so forth that and how it looks, and she gave me a really good picture of each season. And she also, in this case, um, her parents have lived there for 30 years, and uh, their kids were her and her three siblings. Uh, were brought up there and they love the home and it's surrounded in trees isn't it so it's got all the the different varied colors yes. and she has um the parents have four cats over those 30 years that they all love so, <laughs> so she also provided photos of the four cats and told me the positions the cats used to yeah. occupy so yeah. uh, that was fun so yeah. i put the four little things of the cats in them Oh, and I just sort of created it, and, you know, we nailed it. She was thrilled. She told me what it looked like at Christmas and described, you know, how she had the little lamps in the window and all these details. I love doing that. I love drawing all those tiny details because that's what makes each home perfectly unique. It gives it its own personality or character. Oh, and such meaning to the recipients. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. And and the technique I use, which is a, a pen drawing or, or ink drawing and then a watercolor painting on top of it, that technique with the fine pen work allows me to get all those little details. I could if you just use just watercolor, no pen. It's possible, but it's a bit more daunting. It's a little um, more challenging to do it that way. And often you don't quite get the the sharpness and the um, crispness that I like to uh, incorporate in my architectural style paintings. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, have you ever had your customers ask you to do paintings of any other kinds of, of buildings, like, like maybe the church where they got married or the school that they attended or anything like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've had... Um, I've done a beautiful, oh, this was a fun one. I did a painting of a, a lovely chateau, huge, in France, where it was a wedding gift. These people live in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. They w attended the wedding, and they took these lovely photos, and they sent them to me, and it was their wedding gift to the married couple. Oh, wow, that's oh, a nice idea. Oh, how nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, another, um, I once was asked, commissioned to do a painting of this really charming uh, Italian restaurant. It's where this couple were engaged, and it's, it's very special to them, and it was their magic moment, so I did a painting of that. Huh. I've done, um, oh, St. Mary's Church. I've done churches in um, Lansing, Michigan. 
one in New Zealand, actually a beautiful historic building. And I've also done really modern. I've been, uh, there's the, for example, an architectural firm and, and construction firm here in Burbank, California. They do the most exquisite homes. I mean, they are just so unique from modern and glass and metal to sort of gingerbread style or um, detailed Tudors. And so they asked me to do, they, there was just a, a huge array of diverse different architectural styles, new, old, and I did a series of those for their clients, for their projects. And so I often get asked, yes, very much so. One lady, she had her house painted, that I did a painting of her house, and then she has this really unique sculpture that her son created. So I did a painting of the sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some people yeah. ask, um, they've got these gorgeous back gardens that you don't oh. see from the front. So I, I was, um, oh, all sorts of interesting things. And so I'm often doing paintings of that. So they make that a set too with the front of the house and then the, the back with the garden, the pool, the patio. You know, so there's no real um, limit. It's just, it's just his own creation. Oh, that's right. And then recently I did a couple of interesting paintings in Jordan. Oh, I just, yeah, when a, a homeowner in Washington, D.C. had me do her parents, her father's home in Jordan, which was really a unique sort of, I've not done homes in Jordan. So, yes, um, wow. yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be wow, pretty unique. Wow, you are so diverse. So that's, that's really neat, though. Some great ideas for people, though. Well, yeah, and Those you know, perfect. Dave and yeah. I, of course, are porch lovers like yeah. you and Bruce. So how about painting porches? Have you done any, Just have you been commissioned to just paint a porch? Um, you know, I haven't. I've been com commissioned to paint patios at the back, but then, mm -hmm. um, of course, I did my I did a painting of a porch, like what would be my the most ideal porch in the, in the world. So I painted it. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, you've seen. So that's a great idea, and I probably should suggest it to more people because who have great porches. Yeah, there's some definitely some beautiful yeah. porches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, you know, porches that kid, you know, kids grew up on. Or yeah, on and stuff yeah, like the, yeah. Like I remember my grandma's porch with the porch swing and sitting there and looking across the street at the ice cream parlor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's true because that that actually can make a beautiful painting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we saw that you also specialize in landscape art. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you do custom yeah. landscape scenes for your customers? Yeah, I do. People um, have their favorite places um, that they go to, and I usually do those in um, acrylics, not oh. um, not the pen and watercolor. Um, I usually I usually use just that for um, architecture, but say for the bigger canvases, I love um, scenes with different lights, and sunsets, sunrises, um, reflections on water, all these lovely natural phenomena. I love to capture it on canvas, so. I usually do those in big, big canvases. So yes, I do that. But I guess my main, you know, my main projects every week are the architectural projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Dave and I saw that as as an entrepreneur that you also love to help other artists to learn how to earn their income through art. And right. um, I think that's pretty awesome because you know you're trying to help other people to do what you do and actually, mm, what they love, you know, so. to, do, to do what they love. So what are some of the things that you teach them? Well, I, yeah, I do a, a monthly workshop ah. called, uh, called The Flourishing Artist. Hmm. And I have a couple of, um, I have a, on my blog, the Collins Art blog, I have a couple of artists, three articles to be exact. As, yeah, and then I also have one of them is 19 things that I did, like successful actions I took to launch my art career five years ago and make it successful. Mm. And so I really go over those points with people. And it's interesting how um, people are always looking for the magic thing, the thing they never thought of, that new, innovative, creational thing they're not doing. And they forget the basics, yeah. like having a really nice business card. I know it sounds simple. Or even having a, a really good description of who they are and what they do as an artist. And mm -hmm. having a, a bio that tells a story. And having a website. You need a website today so people, you know, not doesn't have to be elaborate or fancy, but just something that people can find you on. And, and then a series of steps that you need to take that you wouldn't even get off the ground. It's mm -hmm. just like they're trying to, you know, soar to the greatest heights 
flying a plane, make their living, travel, do all the things they wanted, but they, you know, forgot to put the wings on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. you got to have some basic foundation in place before you can really take off. So that's what I mainly teach people, believe it or not. Well, that's awesome yeah. that you mentor other artists. You do that. That's really great. And also... I think you won a uh, Historic Preservation Award. Can you, uh, you do a lot of community work? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I actually I started um, an award, which I give. It's a way to give back to homeowners and people who spend so much time and love in restoring, um, taking a building that was about to be demolished or heading for the scrap heat and making it into a beautiful uh, replica of how it was bringing it back to its original glory. So it's called the Lisa Collins Historic Preservation Award. And I've given those awards to um, five different people across the country, having events and making media and just really getting across the message that preservation uh, is good. And it, you know, often the projects you hear about are, um, are developers and cities and taking a blighted area and transforming, and that's all beautiful. A very multi-million dollar projects, but if you really think about it, just look at Nashville, look at parts of Los Angeles, all in every small town uh, and up to the biggest cities. When you go into these beautiful neighborhoods of older homes, lovely gardens, and you just love to walk around and enjoy the ambience, it's the homeowner that's done that. So yeah. this award, I especially... I love to give my award, and the award is actually a painted, a beautiful original pen and watercolor painting of the home that they restored with a plaque. So I love to do that for homeowners who have taken so much time and energy to make their home into such an art-inspiring subject. Yeah, that's wow, just fantastic! That's really great. How do you so. how do you know about the homeowners? Do they apply for your award? Yeah, different ways. They sometimes I. Sometimes get applications, but usually they don't apply. No, because okay. they, it didn't enter their mind that yeah. <laughs> they, <Right. laughs> yeah. they're too busy you know, doing more things for their home. So what I do is I get in touch with the local historic association ah. of the area. And oh. then I sort of do a study. Like I've given one in Lansing, I've in Michigan, in uh, Woodbine, Woodbine, Iowa, a mm. little town. Yeah, we know um, Woodbine. We, we do. There. Yeah, Kansas, Kansas City. So, I mean, a, a diverse and New Mexico, um, the oldest civilization mm. actually existing in America today is on a, a tall mesa. It's a adobe village. Mm. Beautiful. Um, on the top of this this high mountain, this mesa, this flat top mountain mesa. And uh, it's in New Mexico. And it's, I gave it to the woman who had the whole area named as a historic protected area by the National Register of Historic Places. And so, yeah, so each each is different, but it's just like, you know, we've got the advantage today of uh, being able to Google anything pretty well. Never had that before. Uh, so wherever you are, you can always get information. And then I always, as I said, contact the local historic society and get their input and their recommendations of who deserves the award. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're most appreciative of it. Well, Lisa, we're going to wrap up, but we can't go without having you tell us a little bit about growing up in New Zealand. Dave and I, oh. have, Dave and I have never, never been, been to there. New Zealand yet, but but could you just tell us a little bit about your homeland and um, how is it different from the United States? Sure. Growing up in New Zealand, well, it's sort of like even when you're living in a city in New Zealand, it's like living in the country. It's a long, two long islands, and no matter where you are, you're surrounded in water, mm. um, with lakes, rivers, fjordlands, sea. And as a child growing up, you really live, learn to appreciate, like wherever you drive, New Zealanders have, per capita move around and, and travel around their country more than any other people in the world. Mm. Nice. Because of, wow. And the roads are of a very, very good quality. They're, a lot, they're often windy through hills. So you, you grow up wherever you're driving, wherever you're going, if you're hot, you just stop over. There's these beautiful, pristine coastal beaches, and you just jump out, go swimming. You can camp there if you like overnight. You can, And New Zealand is a militant about keeping their country beautiful and clean and, um, and unspoiled. And 
even I go back there often because my family's there, and um, it's still like that today. The best, but even better than that today, they really know how to make really good coffee too. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Well, that's good. I like coffee. <laughs> I drink my fair share. <laughs> you can be in the smallest little podunk place. Yeah. It's beautiful, and you never expect. And there's this little place, a little off the road. Um, they've always got art in there as well, and coffee yeah. and homemade, yeah. um, homemade yummy. I always put on weight when I go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homemade um, scones and um, really yummy pastries and treats, and um, you, and then. The, the coffee is to die for. It's the huh. best coffee you could ever find, way, way out there. So huh. um, today, it's it's just that same beautiful, pristine, pure, sparkling place. But they've got they've got nice restaurants, cafes, and also they have. I don't want it to sound like an advertisement for New Zealand, but a lot of people when they go there, they hire vans. You have a minivan, and you just travel around. Yeah. Or some people do a bike tour and they go, there's a lot of vineyards and it takes a few days. So it's a very rugged outdoor experience. But as, as I was growing up, you know, it's you've got beautiful native bush walks. Everything you can do as a child where you, you know, mm-hmm. you're not about to go bungee jumping. There's a lot of activity you could do outdoors all the way through adulthood to you know, as senior citizens, that's the beauty of it. They've got sort of something for everything, but it's in a very outdoor way. And that's how we grew up, just running. It was always outdoors. You never, why would you be inside? Yeah. You'd be out there enjoying (laughs) nature. Gosh, that was beautiful beautiful to hear. Well, thank you so much for sharing that about um, New Zealand and sharing all about your artwork and your custom house portraits and would you let our listeners know how they could get in touch with you, Lisa, if they would like to have custom house portrait done for themselves? Sure. You just go to, you can search for my name, Lisa Collins. And Lisa's L-E-I-S-A, Lisa Collins. And then it'll come right up. But if you forget that, forget my name, and don't, I wouldn't be offended if you did. I forget names all the time. Just go and put in house portrait. Mm. Oh. Okay. And I will come right up there uh, on the first page of Google. All right. That's Great. Part of successful actions in establishing this market. So just put in house portrait and, and then you'll probably recognize the name. And um, I'm sort of right at the top there. Just click on it and you'll see my website. You'll go to, it covers what I do and all the activities I'm involved in. And then you go to the house portraits page and it takes you. On a tour, there's a slideshow which takes you on a tour through the through 42 states of America of all the different architectural styles. And you can go into different galleries, uh, whether it be Tudor, Craftsman, Victorian, Ranch, Colonial, all these different style uh, styles of architecture that I've painted. And you'll really get a good idea. And there's also a section of the sequence, so it shows the exact sequence and with pictorially how it, how I um, how a painting develops, so it's all there. All right, awesome, very good. Well, thank you, thank so, you so much, much. for Goodness joining day. Dave and I today on the porch, Lisa, and we really appreciate your artistry, and we look forward to speaking with you again. Oh, likewise, and thank you very much for what you're doing. I think you do a wonderful job. Oh, well, gosh, Thanks you're a lot. so welcome. All right. okay. Have a wonderful okay. day, Lisa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Today's show was brought to you by PorchIdeas.com, and we hope you stop by to get ideas for designing, building, and decorating your porch. You have been listening to the Porch Ideas Network. We invite you to subscribe to our podcast to get creative and innovative ideas for your porch and yard.